Hi, today we are in the Tea Garden in Berlin and uh, we are going to do a review of the AVX wireless microphone system from Sennheiser. Now we are currently recording this video with uh, the lavalier mic which comes with this system and we are also going to do a review of the handheld microphone which you can buy for this system. So let's start by having a look at the different components which comes with the AVX. So let's have a look at what comes with the Sennheiser AVX. This is the uh, lav mic uh, part. We will look at the handheld mic later on. So it comes in this uh, nice case. So we have this part. We will look at it in a second. Another cable, XLR cable. Uh, this is the transmitter. Uh, here we have the microphone, the lav microphone. This is another cable and the receiver and this clips. So this is basically everything that comes in the case. We'll put it aside and uh, let's start by looking at the receiver. As you can see it's very very small, really nice. Uh, on the front we have uh, an XLI connector. We will look at it in a second. Here we have a few buttons. We will talk about them in a minute. But uh, on the top, you can see uh, all uh, a small micro USB connector. And this is really cool because you can basically connect a, a micro USB. And we have been doing this for a while uh, in order to uh, charge the unit basically on the go. So uh, although it has about four hours of battery life, it has a lithium ion battery, you can basically use it for as long as you want using an external battery. So let's look at the, the transmitter now. Fairly small. Again, just like the receiver, it has a, a connector for a micro USB. So again, this has about eight hours, but you can charge it for as long as you want. On the back, you have this uh, metal clips for putting this on your belt. On both sides, you have these buttons to release the battery. So this is the battery. Again, lithium ion battery, just like the receiver. On the top, you have the mute button. It's actually a switch, fairly easy to use and a green or red light for uh, understanding what's the status of the unit. Here you have on the side an on off switch and a pair switch. Very very simple straightforward to use and a small screen in the front to let you know what battery status and the uh, general information about the status of the unit. On the top you have a, a connector for the microphone. It's uh, these uh, sort of uh, screwing a connector, 3.5 millimeter, but uh, a screwing one uh, like a lot of other microphones from uh, Sennheiser. This is the ME2 version. There is another MK2 uh, version from uh, Sennheiser, which is more expensive. As you can see, this is the capsule, fairly small capsule itself. What isn't small is this uh, foam thing, which makes the entire unit a bit big. I'm not sure why they're using such a large foam. Uh, maybe you can put a different smaller foam, but we're not sure. But uh, using the uh, provided foam, the microphone itself uh, looks a bit big, I have to say. Uh, we will see a comparison to the uh, audio technica that we have been using later on. So here we have the clips and to be honest, this is maybe the only part that we didn't really like about this kit. Um, I'm not sure why, but it's not that user-friendly or not usable. Uh, we actually uh, eventually used something different, uh, as we will show you in a second, uh, which is this thing. This is a magnetic connector, and actually Sennheiser has the same thing. This, is, uh, this came from our AT899 from Audio-Technica. Uh, we will show you uh, this unit later, but uh, we use it with the uh, ME2, with the Sennheiser ME2, and it worked perfectly. So uh, maybe you can adapt other uh, third-party uh, connectors or clips. Um, this unit here, like this, very, very simple. You can uh, put the uh, magnetic thing underneath your shirt and use this thing basically to connect your uh, microphone to it. Very use, very useful. The provided one isn't that useful. This is uh, just the 
USB or micro USB cable. Here we have an XLR to a 3.5 inch uh, millimeter, excuse me, connector. So if you want to con uh, connect the unit directly into your uh, DSLR camera, for example, we actually don't recommend this that much. We we used um, we use the DR70D from Tascam to actually record everything using this unit. As you can see, this is a, a small connector. Let's uh, put it uh, out of the paper, uh, the, the bag, uh, so you can actually see what it does. Again, if you're using uh, the receiver, uh, if you're using it uh, uh, to connect directly to your camera, you can use this device uh, and you plug it inside it's uh, fairly secure as you will see in a second here like this and then you can put this for example on the top of your camera on the hot shoe basically it's a cold shoe uh, to connect uh, this unit to your camera and then you can use the XLR to 3.5 millimeter uh, to connect uh, directly to your camera or you can put it uh, again on your belt or maybe somewhere else. We wanted to do a quick comparison between the uh, AVX uh, microphone, the ME2 in this case, and uh, the Audio-Technica AT899, which is this microphone. As you can see, there is a pretty huge difference in terms of the size between the units. This is uh, just a, a basically the connector which uh, holds the XLR cable of the 18899. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there is a pretty huge difference inside and it's actually more to do with the foam, uh, the foam cover of both units. And as you, as you see now, the difference in size of the capsules themselves is not that big uh, it's it's just the foam uh, which again is a question why uh, Sennheiser use such a large foam uh, the connector of the AT899 uh, is a mini XLR while the connector of the Sennheiser ME2 is a 3.5 millimeter as we have said before uh, here you can see this is a mini XLR and uh, this is a 3.5 millimeter. So again, pretty small difference in the capsule side, but pretty large difference in terms of the foam. So let's have a look at the Sennheiser handheld unit. Uh, you can either buy this separately or in the US as a kit. In Europe, it's uh, currently sold separately. Before we look at it, uh, we wanted to uh, show you this. This is the USB uh, charger that comes either with the handheld uh, mic or with the love mic that we have shown you before so you also get this so let's see what you get also it also comes with this nice case let's take everything out first of all you get uh, this uh, unit we will look at it in a second and the second thing that you get is the microphone itself as you can see it's a very large microphone. This is the battery. Uh, it's also a lithium ion battery, just like the one that you have on the receiver and transmitter of the love mic. So this is the battery. Uh, if you wanna uh, put the battery inside, all you need to do is put it like this and it clicks. The second that it clicks, you see a red light here which indicates that the microphone currently isn't paired with anything. If you want to pair it, you have a pair button here. You press it and you press the pair button on the receiver. And in about two or three seconds, uh, both units are paired and you're ready to go and start recording. So this is really simple. Uh, another thing that you have here is this uh, small screen, which uh, tells you the status of the microphone and how much battery life you have. This has an internal battery, which we've shown you, which is good for about nine hours. Obviously we didn't test it for nine hours, but it's a very, very long time to use a handheld microphone. So this is really nice. Now, two small things that we do want to mention. One is that we didn't find any way to turn this off uh, using a bottom. So it doesn't have an on off switch. Uh, if you want to turn this off, you need to remove the battery. 
pretty strange. We're not sure why Sennheiser has done that, and we actually asked them about it, and we will let you know. So this is one thing. Uh, and another second thing has to do with the battery. Uh, to charge the battery, there is a USB connection connector here uh, inside the battery, which is a bit strange because uh, on both the transmitter and receiver of the lav mic, uh, you can use uh, the either this to charge from the wall or an external battery to charge it on the go so you can basically use uh, the transmitter and love receiver uh, excuse me the other way around the uh, love uh, transmitter and the re a receiver which works with this as well uh, indefinitely using uh, again either part from the wall your computer external battery like we are using uh, and in this case you can't do that and this is strange we're not sure why they decided not to include the option uh, to charge it from the outside from from here and the reason that we are saying this is that let's put it inside this actually comes with this unit and the idea is that uh, using if you put this for example on this stand what you will be able to do is basically use this for a recording a like this. You will be able to use this uh, for recording sound for your videos um, or for v uh, blogs or anything else that you want to do uh, and charge this on the go using, uh, again, either this, your computer, or anything else via USB. And in the way that the Sennheiser currently made this, you are not uh, able to do this. But again, this has nine hours of battery life, so it's a really long time, and we doubt that anybody will actually be able to drain this in one go. Uh, and you can always, of course, buy another battery. So uh, that's about that. Uh, as you can see, again, the microphone is very large. This, for example, just for comparison's sake, is our uh, older XLR professional uh, microphone, much smaller. Obviously, this has an internal battery inside. This has uh, just the AA battery inside. Uh, so this is pretty large, but very well built. And basically, this is everything that you need to know about this. We will also have a video by Sennheiser, which explains a bit about the two different types of uh, the handheld mic. So uh, watch that if you're interested in that. Now let's go on and uh, do some uh, actual uh, tests to hear the sound from both microphones. Before we move on to test the sound quality on both microphones, we wanted to have a quick look at the wireless connection quality. First, we tested for interference. We looked at how the AVX functions when there are other wireless devices around. We looked at what happens when the unit is set next to a ringing smartphone. Next, we looked at a cordless phone. A router, a microwave, and basically any other wireless device that we could find. In all cases, the AVX functioned great and we didn't have any problems. Do note that the AVX uses 1.9 GHz range, which is far less used today, unlike the 2.4 GHz, which we know from Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and other devices. 1.9 GHz is used mostly by decked cordless phones today. We didn't have one at the moment, but we promise to try one as soon as we can get it. Baby monitors and some walkie-talkies also use the 1.9 GHz frequency, so keep that in mind, although the unit is designed to change frequencies on the go whenever there is a problem. Again, we didn't run into any of these issues. For the indoor test, we set the receiver outdoors in the garden and walked with the love mic and then with the handheld mic in our apartment. Although the maximum range in this case was probably under 20 meters or 60 feet, the signal had to go through pretty thick walls and closed windows and we even tried it with a closed door on the second floor without any problem. The ultimate test was checking if the unit will work from inside and reinforced concrete room with a heavy metal door closed. The unit worked perfectly and we didn't have any issues. We also tested the handheld mic and the love mic both indoors and outdoors. The outdoors test was done mostly to test the maximum range of the unit and we have done it in the park in Berlin. 
Okay, so we are sitting about 20 meters away from the camera and the receiver. And as you can see, you can hear us uh, loud and clear. Uh, this is much further away than any, anything that we have ever shot. We are shooting with a 50 millimeter lens. So uh, this is basically way too far for this type of lens. Uh, what we are going to do next is try and see uh, what's the maximum distance that we can take this uh, microphone uh, and still uh, be able to sound or to hear uh, and receive the signal well. We are well over 50 meters away from the camera right now and as you can hear the system sounds very very well. Uh, we can uh, we can't find really any uh, use for uh, uh, this type of scenario where you are so far away from the camera. As you can see, uh, in a lot of situations, people even get in the way between you and the camera. Uh, but uh, it works, and uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely a, a good sign for the system and anybody who uh, would like to use it in a very long range. We now move on to the sound quality test. We will start with the test of the ME2 Love Mic and the Audio-Technica AT899 wire love microphone, both connected to our Tascam DR70D. The following will be a short text from the Sennheiser spec page of the AVX, read using both microphones. For the sake of testing the AVX Love Mic, we're going to read to you the AVX receiver technical data. So we'll start with a frequency band, which goes from 1880 to 1930 megahertz, which is country specific. The audio output is XLR. The operating temperature is from minus 10 degrees Celsius to plus 55 degrees Celsius. The signal to noise ratio is below 90 dB. The RF output power is adaptive up to 250 milliwatts peak, which is also country specific. The operating time of the receiver is up to 15 hours. The modulation, if you know what this means, is GFSK. The audio output level goes from minus 30 dBU and up to 0 dBU in 4 steps. The battery specification is lithium-ion 3.7 volts. The dynamic range is below 120 dB. The sampling rates is 24-bit 48 kilohertz and the latency is 19 milliseconds. So we'll start with the frequency band which goes from 1880 to 1930 megahertz, which is country specific. The audio output is XLR. The operating temperature is from minus 10 degrees Celsius to plus 55 degrees Celsius. The signal to noise ratio is below 90 dB. The RF output power is adaptive up to 250 milliwatts peak, which is also country specific. The operating time of the receiver is up to 15 hours. The modulation, if you know what this means, is GFSK. The audio output level goes from minus 30 dBU and up to 0 dBU in 4 steps. The battery specification is lithium-ion 3.7 volts. The dynamic range is below 120 dB. The sampling rates is 24-bit 48 kilohertz and the latency is 19 milliseconds. On this screen grab from Audacity you can see the difference between the exact same recordings, the ones that you have just heard, done with both the Audio-Technica and the Sennheiser microphones. To us it seems clear that the Sennheiser sounds significantly better on this segment. Now let's have a look at the handheld microphones. We will do the exact same comparison but now with the Sennheiser E835 handheld mic and our old XLR handheld microphone. We're going to read to you the specifications of the handheld AVX transmitter. The frequency band is 1880 to 1930 MHz. The operating temperature is minus 10 Celsius to plus 55 degrees Celsius. The signal to noise ratio is below 90 decibels. The RF Output power is adaptive up to 250 milliwatts, which is peak and country specific. The modulation is GFSK. The battery specification is lithium ion 3.7 volts. The dynamic range is below 120 decibels. The sampling rates is 24 bit 48 kilohertz and the latency is 19 milliseconds. Now we are going to read to you the specifications of the handheld AVX transmitter. 
The frequency band is 1880 to 1930 megahertz. The operating temperature is minus 10 Celsius to plus 55 degrees Celsius. The signal to noise ratio is below 90 decibels. The RF output power is adaptive up to 250 milliwatts, which is peak and country specific. The modulation is GFSK. The battery specification is lithium ion 3.7 volts. The dynamic range is below 120 decibels. The sampling rates is 24 bit 48 kilohertz and the latency is 19 milliseconds. Just like before it seems clear to us that the Sennheiser sounds much cleaner than our older handheld microphone. One last thing before we wrap up and move to the conclusion. Sennheiser added support for phantom power to the AVX. Some users mistakenly thought that the receiver can be powered using phantom power. Well, it can't although it can be powered using USB as we have shown to you. What the Phantom Power does is give you the ability to save battery power. The unit basically senses whatever your recorder is turned off and will go to sleep automatically after a few seconds to preserve battery life. Initially this didn't work for us with the DR70D, but we later found out that we forgot to send the Phantom Power on our second XLR output, where the receiver was connected. After we turned it on it worked perfectly. Now with that out of the way, we can conclude this very extensive review of the AVX. So we want to conclude this review of the AVX wireless system. We've been using this system for the past uh, several weeks, both in uh, Germany and Berlin and back here in Israel. And we really like what we have seen. First of all, we really like the build quality. It is a very robust system, both the handheld unit and the uh, transmitter and receiver that uh, you have seen, uh, all made very, very well. Now in terms of the range we have shown you, it worked uh, outdoors well over 50 meters, so this is really great. Indoors it also worked very nicely, uh, we tried it between floors with open or closed doors and uh, even inside a reinforced concrete room which we have here and it all worked perfectly well, we didn't have any problems. Obviously the range is shorter, so don't expect 50 meters in indoors. Now, in terms of uh, interference, we tried it with all sorts of devices next to a router, a microwave, a cell phone, a, a cordless phone, all of these, and we didn't have any issues. So for us, at least, it worked very nicely. Now, in terms of the sound quality, which is maybe the most important thing, uh, we compare this to the Audio-Technica 8899, and it sounded better, which is a, let's say, medium uh, level wired microphone, lav microphone, and we also compare this handheld unit to our own pro-level uh, uh, microphone, again corded microphone, we used the uh, uh, XLR microphone, it worked better than uh, both, both the handheld unit and the lav uh, mic which we have used, this is the ME2, there is even a better version uh, on uh, sale which is slightly more expensive. Now um, in terms of uh, who this system is really intended for, well, we've talked to Sennheiser and we read what Sennheiser has been writing on their website. And what we are concluding from this is that uh, for Sennheiser, this system is really intended for, let's say, advanced users and maybe um, photographers or videographers, actually, who are on the go. People who are not uh, necessarily dedicated sound people, but people who are shooting video and need good sound but don't want to deal with it a lot. So if you're a professional a videographer and sound person, maybe, and you've been using the G3, for example, from Sennheiser, maybe this system is not necessarily for you. You can continue using your G3. But if you don't have a, a, a sound, a wireless sound system so far, or you want something which is really simple and easy to use, then this is possibly one of the best solutions on the market right now, because it's very easy to use basically plug and play and you turn it on and it works and this is the way it was for us at least. We didn't have any issues with this, it was very quick and very easy and simple. So in, in terms of uh, on-the-go photographers or videographers who need something very simple, 
this is a great system. Now, finally, let's talk about the price. This isn't a cheap system, and even with a, a, if you compare it to other Sennheiser products, and specifically to the G3, this is more expensive. So we're talking about a $900 for the love mic and the receiver. If you're talking about the system which also includes the handheld unit, you're going uh, up to about $1,300. So this is pretty expensive. This is about, I would say, $250, maybe $300 more expensive than the G3 uh, with the same, more or less the same configuration. So uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're a professional audio person, maybe the G3 is for you. If you're looking for something which is straightforward and simple, basically plug and play, this is a really great solution. Uh, as always, subscribe to our channel on your tube. And if you want to read the full review of uh, this uh, AVX wireless system, go to lensvid.com.